Today we're going to look over some TIG welding aluminum settings. Thanks for tuning in for another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name is Dusty. I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. I do welding projects in both two-dimensional and three-dimensional art surfaces. And on my YouTube channel, I love showing off and teaching the art of TIG welding. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to bounce back, check out the previous episodes. There's a ton of episodes there for you to watch. So I've been getting a lot of messages lately on Instagram from people asking for basic aluminum TIG welding settings. If you don't follow me on Instagram already, there's my Instagram handle right there. So today we're gonna have a look at how I set up my machines. I'll give you a rundown of how I dial them in so I can get set up to lay down some dimes. So the first thing obviously we're gonna look at when it comes to settings is the heat. So take a look at this weld here. You can see in the corner there's an amperage display. As I'm buzzing along laying filler rod down, you can see that my heat is not fully blending the filler rod into the base plate. I could slow down at the start to allow for a full blend at the beginning of the pass, fill and chill, but without enough amperage set on the machine, we can hang out all day, we can switch the thinner rod, it's not gonna matter. In this case here, it's much better just to turn up our heat to an adequate amperage level and then get going from there. See here, look at the amperage display. We have more heat off of the start. We have more filler going in. We're chilling out a little longer at the start, giving it a chance to sit down and heat up fully. And boom, we're off rolling with a better profile, better heat, which leads for a better weld. Look here at this outside corner. This outside corner, you can see there is not enough heat or amperage to fully sit it down and let it fully blend into the base material of the joint. Taking a look at it after, you can see we might have consistent steps and consistent puddles, but the profile overhangs the plate. You can see with the ruler here. And then if you flip it over, there's no penetration. The weld did not sit fully down into the weld joint, which means it did not sink through into the base material, punching through to the other side for proper penetration. See this one here? Much better. We have more heat. We have more blending into the base material. So our filler material is doing a better job sinking through to the other side for proper penetration. We flip it over. There we go. It looks much better, right? So before you get going on a weld joint that you're unfamiliar with, do a couple test runs on a piece of scrap just to find the ballpark of where your amperage needs to be set so it can fully sink and blend into the base material. Another really important thing that I've mentioned a lot of times on this show before, which doesn't get a lot of attention, is post flow. Your post flow is the gas that flows out of your torch after you have finished your weld. And this gas is set to come out to protect your tungsten while your tungsten is glowing red hot. If the gas shuts off while your tungsten is still glowing red hot, your tungsten will automatically form a layer of oxide on the surface of the tungsten electrode. When you finish a weld, your tungsten should look shiny. It should not look chalky, gray, or black. Something like a silver or gold, that's what you want. What I usually do when I get going on a new machine setup or something I'm not familiar with, is I'll set my post flow to be much longer than I need it to be. Then what I do is I slowly dial it back. When I finish a weld, I have a look and see when my tungsten is finished glowing. Then I will dial my gas back from there. You can save a little bit of gas that way, but you can still make sure that your tungsten is protected by the layer of gas to stop it from forming oxide. If you're ever doing weld passes and you're looking at the beginnings of each weld pass and you see a little puff of contamination, Usually what this is, it's a direct indicator that you do not have enough or adequate post flow coming out of your torch after the previous weld. What will happen is you will finish a weld, it will not be properly covered, it will form this oxide, and then without even knowing it, you'll go to start your next weld, boom, you've just blown all that oxide into the start of your next weld. This is a very common thing that happens with my students, whether I'm working with them in person or in my online training program. It's a really small detail that gets forgotten a lot of the time. So make sure you have a proper setup with your post flow. Another common thing that I usually fine tune on my machine once I get going is my balance. When I'm welding something like an outside corner, something where I'm welding with overall a lot less amount of amperage, I'm usually gonna tend to turn up the positive side of my AC cycle. Some machines are better at just the balance to the amperage that you're welding at but from my experience the machine that I learned on my tungsten would always tend to misshape and crack when welding at low amperage simply because the AC cycle did not provide enough positive side to clean the tip of the tungsten so what I would always do is turn my positive side up a little bit more it would provide more cleaning action back towards the tungsten it would maintain a better ball on the end of tungsten for a much longer time. When I'm welding at high amperage, so thick fillet welds and stuff like that, I will definitely tend to dial my positive side of my cycle down a little bit. So I'll be running more negative. Anytime I have too much positive side of the cycle at high amperage, you will see the tungsten's tip starting to flutter. 
Even if you have a decent sized ball on the end of the tungsten, it will become unstable under high amperage. What this means is you're running too much positive side of the AC cycle. When you turn your positive down a little bit, so you're running a little more negative, you can weld at much higher temperatures and keep a more stable tungsten tip. Plus, more negative side usually means there's a little more penetration, at least in some circumstances, directed on the weld zone. This is one small setting that you can adjust to get a little more life out of your tungsten, as well as provide a little bit more penetration possibly with some joints you'll do. Another thing you can adjust, and this is only a setting that you can adjust on an inverter type machine, is the frequency. Running a higher frequency will tighten your arc cone up significantly, as well as concentrating all of your heat into a smaller area. A lower frequency will provide a wider arc cone, which will provide eh, more general heat distribution to the weld zone area. These are just some ways that you can fine tune your machine to get you different results for different uses. So this is the way I generally like to start with adjusting my settings on my machines. I could do a whole episode on the different torch setups that I could do for aluminum as well. If you're interested in another episode on torch setup for aluminum, leave it in the comments below. I might just pop off another episode about that for you. So if you got any value or if I helped you out in any way with this video, here's how you can repay me. Go out today and do a random act of kindness for a stranger. I don't care if it's a big thing, small thing, in person, something nice online, don't care. Do something to spread some positivity in the world today. We need it. So to all the ARC heads who watched the show all the way to the end, I thank you very much. I appreciate you as always. I hope everybody's doing good out there. I'll see you next week. Fill and chill. Talk soon. Peace.